Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Well, we spent quite a few weeks working our way through Ephesians, I think longer than uh, we ever thought it would take us, Colin, but it's been a a wonderful journey. And uh, you've been reading to us from your new translation, The Truth, right the way through. We've now reached the final greetings. I guess you want to say a little bit more about uh, the armour of God that Paul refers to at the end of his letter. Well, I want to just say a little bit more about the prayer and the spirit that he refers to at the end of that. Whenever you pray, depend on the spirit to lead you and fill your prayer with his life and power, no matter what you are asking of God. How important to pray in the spirit continually for all your fellow believers. To pray in the Spirit is not just to pray in tongues. It's not just to wrap it off in tongues, you know. To pray in the Spirit is, as this translation says, to be led by the Spirit and for the Spirit to fill our prayer with his wisdom, with his revelation. It's really allowing the Spirit of God to lead us in prayer. And we teach people in our Bible college and in in the church very much to be led by the Spirit in their prayer life. Uh, We have a a prayer academy that is teaching people how to pray and how to lead others in prayer. And quite a lot of people in the church have gone gone through that now. Uh, We're a praying church. We pray 24-7. We have a, a system of prayer continuously throughout the day and night, throughout the year. And that, that's wonderful um, because it shows that people appreciate how important prayer is, how central this has to be to our life uh, together in Christ. But if you're going to pray meaningfully and if you're going to pray with real purpose uh, and, and uh, you're, going to, you're going to pray victoriously, I, I can't avoid that word because the scripture says, you know, Christ always leads us in victory, in, in his victorious triumphant procession. So, uh, you know, God wants us to prevail. He wants us to overcome in the situations where we pray for. Yeah, yeah. The, tr- the problem for many people is they want to spend more time talking about why God doesn't answer prayer than to talk about why God does answer prayer. If they only got into the scriptures and believed the promises and focused on on all that the God says about his willingness to answer prayer, then they would actually have very much more successful prayer lives. Why? Because the Spirit of God leads us into the Word. Jesus said he is the Spirit of truth who guides us into the truth of the Word. And I'm not wanting anybody to come under false condemnation through what I'm saying uh, about victory. Because, um, you know, I know very well pastorally what it means to have to battle through things in my own life, in my ministry, uh, in the circumstances of the church, and in, in, in uh, um, the lives of other people. You know, you, you have to appreciate that in a ministry like mine, you get people referred to you from all over the nation and beyond who have got the most desperate problems. You know, I, I, if people are known to have to be used by God to heal and to resolve situations, then you're going to get people being referred to you and phoning you up and and um, letters and emails and all the rest of it. And and you look at these things, you think, well, you know, how can you answer an email like this when you're dealing with a whole life? But it means that you know, you're. I'm very well aware of of all these really traumatic and difficult circumstances that people have to work their way through. But I'm also aware of the only thing that works when you have to do that. And the only thing that works is faith in God, faith in what he has said, and dependence upon the Holy Spirit. And if only if only the people would apply those simple principles instead of getting caught up with the problem and their feelings and their reactions and what this person has said and that person said and just getting overwhelmed by the circumstances. If only they would keep their focus, you know, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Uh, That's what we read in Hebrews. And it's so true. 
that if you keep your focus on, on the Lord, if you keep your focus on his word, if you keep your focus on what he has done for us on the cross and what he has promised and what he has said in his word, then you're going to become an overcomer. You're not going to be someone whose sort of first f thought is, well, this is impossible, this is going to be difficult. You know, God, God taught me a, such a simple principle when I was a very, very young pastor. He said, Colin, if you expect a battle, you'll get a battle. If you expect victory, you'll have victory. Now, isn't that simple? I mean, that you know, the deepest pr truths are always the most simple ones. But they are simple principles, as, as you've just said, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. And, you know, you can say to someone, would you expect a battle? Because if you expect a battle, you're going to have one. Now, sometimes you have to battle through to the victory. Fight the good fight of faith. But your expectation is victory. Your focus is on the victory. And you are confident that you're going to get from where you are to the victory. It's, it's, not a, it's not a question of saying, oh, this is going to be done. Oh, I need a word from God. And, oh, you have many words from God there in your Bible. You don't need a word from God to tell you that he wants you to overcome in the situation in which you're placed. And, uh, you know, that, that is to be your first thought. If you are in a situation where God then shows you that this is not going to be resolved in the way that you want for some reason or other, then that is an initiative that God will take. But that is never to be your starting point. Your starting point is always to believe what Jesus said. You will receive whatever you ask in prayer if you believe. Now that's simple too, isn't it? And you can't talk your way around that. It's a very simple statement. According to your faith, it will be done to you. How often did Jesus say that to your people? Go your way, your faith has healed you. And you know, I hear people say, oh, faith can't heal. Well, Jesus says faith can heal. He says faith in him can heal you. Go on your way, your faith has healed you. If, if Jesus didn't want to say that, he wouldn't have said it. If Jesus meant something else, he'd have said something else. He knew exactly how to say what he wanted to say. And so, you know, I'm just encouraging everybody because faith comes from hearing the word. Get a copy of this truth version <laughs> and read it because you'll understand it. And, you know, one, one, one of God said a very interesting thing to me the other day uh, because I, I pray for the people that are reading this, you know. And, and God, God said to me, Colin, when you translated that, there was a dynamic of faith in the way in which you translated it. And that dynamic of faith will be communicated to the people who read it. And he also said, you know, you, you know you're under anointing when you did that. And that's true because, you know, in the natural, I would never even have attempted to, to produce a version of the New Testament. He said, well, because you are under anointing when you produced it, that anointing will come upon people when they read it. And this 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 got me so excited, you know, because I now see, you know I now see you know he said every time a copy of this is sold, it's like giving a people a sack of seed, you know, seed of the word. And he said, if you give them that that sack, I will water that. The anointing that will come upon them will water that seed, so that it becomes fruitful in their lives. So you know when God God speaks like this, I get really excited. I think yes, this is encouraging. So, that, so what are your hopes for this new translation, the truth? And what are you expecting? Well, I say in the I say in the um, in the introduction that you know when God asked me to do it, I said, "Why, Lord? There are so many versions in English. Why?" He said, "I want a version by a preacher who will bring out the understanding of the word, because my people will only apply the word and live by it if they understand it." And so many of my people study the word, but they don't really understand what I want. And you know, one person after another has told me already, and this has only been out a few weeks, it has transformed the way in which they read the scriptures. And they're spending so much more time now. People tell me they get absorbed. You know, whereas before they would read a few verses more or less out of duty because that's what they should do every day, they begin to read and they get absorbed. And before they know where they are, they've read several chapters. And they've, they've just, they, you know, people have said it's just like actually hearing the word spoken to you. It's not like reading the scriptures. It's as if someone is actually speaking the word into your heart.
That's so now, beautiful. I just I want you to know I give God all the glory for this because nobody could produce that kind of effect except the Holy Spirit. And so it just encourages. Anyway, we've got to we've got we've got to finish this. Paul says, I am still an ambassador of the truth. Yes, even though I am in chains at present. So I pray that despite everything, I will be bold in declaring the truth without any fear. Well, I think I've been doing that this week, haven't I? Tychicus is a dear brother and the Lord's faithful servant. He can tell you far more about my circumstances than I can write now. This is why I'm sending him to you. However, he will also be a great encouragement to you, an encouragement to your faith. You see, Paul is always wanting to encourage people in their faith. I bless all the brothers with God's peace. May God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ impart both love and faith to you, together with the grace that he delights to pour out freely on all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ with a never-ending love. And that's where I want to finish, you see, because Paul begins and ends his letters with grace, doesn't he? It's like a grace sandwich. And grace is God giving, God imparting to us everything that we need in order to fulfill his plan and purpose for our lives. And this is the great thing, you see. How can I say this about this truth translation? Because it's the grace of God. The grace of God just was poured out upon it. I believe the grace of God will come upon people as they read it. But not, not just the truth Bible, but all of us, as we seek to fulfill the will and purpose of God in our lives, as we seek to see his plan being fulfilled, we know the grace of God. God will grace us for it. Whatever is his will, he will grace it for us. And, and he will grace us to accomplish and to achieve whatever he wants. So we can just say, thank you, Jesus. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 